an intro music, go for something really inappropriate. Um, thanks for coming back again today, especially if you were socialising hard last night. Uh, it's kind of early if you were up late. I was, correcting my slides. Um, as mentioned, I went from a more managerial role back to an IC role, and I wish I'd thought about my career along those two axes sooner than I did. And I'm trying to make this the talk that it would have been really handy to have heard years ago. Um, and it's worth highlighting, this is a very sort of personal point of view. Your mileage may differ, um, but so far as I can tell, it's probably generally useful. So I'll start off with a little context because I'll use terms that have, have very vague and, and commonly used, but everyone means something different. Um, I'll look at some of the trigger signs that you might be due a change and what to keep an eye out for. Then the benefits of each path, because there's these two paths and they both have huge benefits that are worth considering, in my opinion. There's sort of increasingly dramatic changes you can make to your career to get to these. Um, and then also throughout and at the end, how I found this path to be. So uh, me, I had a lot of different jobs, including um, I did some work experience in Soho in the media industry. I worked in the music industry. I thought all these cool jobs, I did not enjoy them. I was always on the computer. And it turns out my best friend when I was 12, who said, you like maths, you should do computers. That's a good career, had been right. Uh, I shouldn't have ignored her. So um, I was fortunate to be able to go and get a computer science degree, because that seems like the sensible thing to do if you're doing this seriously. Then I um, became a web development executive, also known as a junior, which is the most grand title I've ever had and probably the most meaningless. Uh, I had some great mentoring off the bat though, and that was really important. So I learned to code, which is totally different to having uh, a degree. Um, and then I went from a pro um, junior to a mid to a senior. And then I joined the FT and uh, was a senior front end engineer still. Then I became a full stack engineer. Then I became a, C a principal engineer in full stack. And then uh, having spent the majority of my career there and looking like I was an individual contributor, but really I was an engineering manager. I flipped to being a staff software engineer in SRE uh, in cloud networking. Now, on the face of it, the big change here probably, well, could appear to be that I went from front end to full stack to like massive cloud SRE. You know, now I know all about packet transfers and ethernet and stuff that had been touched on at university and is broadly irrelevant to most people. But really the biggest change I've actually found in the day to day was going on this path from being an individual contributor to a management role back into an IC. Um, so some terms that I'll be using throughout that don't have formal definitions, but they're kind of, this is kind of my opinion as to what the most beautiful form of this job might look like. Uh, and I'd say an engineering manager, you're mostly line management and team shape, team health, supporting that, making your team the most productive it can be and the most happy it can be and work planning, but like from a company wide view, how will this team's piece play into this other team's piece? How is it going to meet what the company's trying to do as a whole? And I think ideally there's a little technical in there as well. You can still do a bug fix. You can still be on call. You've still got your finger on the pulse. And I think that's what makes you an engineering manager. In contrast, an IC, like you'll notice everything here is technical. The, the work is technical, you're writing code and code reviews and the leadership is technical and it is worth calling out that's including technical mentoring and coaching. You don't just, I don't think you should drop that. It doesn't matter which track you're on. I think that's an essential part to bring, bring people along for the journey and, and if they want your help to give them it. Um, and technical problem solving, not, not solving the problems the company has, solving the problems that the code and the architecture has and figuring out what that is and how to address it. So my talk is narrow. I'm just looking at these two axes. Obviously there's much bigger changes you can make. And I've put a link in my notes to a, a good blog by my previous manager um, 
about what to think about for your next role. Because if you are going to move, there's more than just the points I'm making. Now, uh, it's worth, I think, for everybody to evaluate the track you're on now. Because until you figure out what you're actually doing, you can't figure out maybe what you want to be doing or where you're headed. So you do this nice and regularly according to this perfect plan. Or, like me, you do it less perfectly in reaction to um, an external stress. So maybe something in your life has made your, the role you're doing now no longer right for you. Or uh, un misfortune, like made redundant. Or good fortune, like having a technical uh, recruitment person approach you and really, really help you. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't have been able to change. It is, um, yeah, I think there's a thing, I don't know, I think it comes in different forms, but having some sort of diary as to what you're doing in your job on the day-to-day, -day, on the week-to-week, -week, it has a load of benefits, not just for that end-of-year review when you think, what have I been doing for a year? And people say, what do you do? And you go, I don't know, but I am busy. It's really handy. You can also use it for this, to say, uh, this is what a friend did, advice he had got when he wasn't sure that he was happy. It's like, what are you doing every day? Did you enjoy that? And what parts of what you were doing were actually useful for the company? And hopefully, if you're in the right job, those two things align, but I think there may be a dissonance and you're not actually enjoying the work you're doing on the day-to-day. -day. So some trigger signs that you might, that you might be uh, approaching a point to change. You're bored and frustrated by your work now. You used to have a spark. You used to love it. There's always boring bits. There's always nasty bits, actually. And the more senior you get, the more likely it is that you'll have to take on a slightly ugly bit. And you just you handle that as best you can. But if you've got no buzz at all and your heart just sinks every time, it's like, oh, Monday. Maybe some people that's always life. But for me, that wasn't always life. There was like this... Oh, I don't want to shut the computer. I want to keep doing this thing. I'd lost that. Um, you could be becoming the wrong expert, uh, the expert at the wrong thing. I've done that. It was a software package. God, it was horrible. I was one of the only people who could use it. And I thought, I do not want to be that person. This shouldn't be used. I'm stepping away. I don't know who took that on. No one cared for it, but um, <laughs> the business did. So they had to find someone when I left. Are you staying because you're scared you can't move? It's a bit self-fulfilling. The longer you are where you are, the more, the more, less confidence you'll have, you can change. Does your role match what it says on the tin? This is what happened to me. Principal engineer says individual contributor. Reality had become engineering manager, which was good, but I hadn't recognized that that change had happened. And also, what's the next rung up for you? Do you want it? Will you be any good at it? If you don't really want it, you probably won't be any good at it. Well, that's how things work for me. Uh, you, it's worth considering why you should stay. You might love what you do right now. So don't move just because everyone else does, because everyone goes, oh, well, you get to this level of IC and then you have to be managed. No, you don't. If you're loving what you're doing right now, you could sidestep if you're bored of doing it in this shape, but you don't have to change. Just because other people follow that path, that doesn't mean it's your path. Change for good reasons. And then the big reason is bad timing. So as mentioned, I've got a family and I was very busy taking on a whole load of change at work as well. That would have been crazy. Uh, you might have like financial commitments. You've got to pay the rent at the end of the day. And also if you're on the brink of a promotion, maybe get the promotion first and then start thinking about moving across elsewhere. Don't throw that away. <laughs> um, so looking that you want to change, why might you change from being an IC to a manager? Because it's a very valid progression. And even though it's a more common one, it still has a, a whole bunch of benefits for, for you. Um, obviously, your leadership and communication, you have to do a, a load more of that. I think it's important to see the other side of the mirror. You widen your viewpoints. And by that, I don't just mean, oh, what are the other teams up to or the other parts of the business? I mean, understanding HR and accounting and budgets and why you're hearing no. So once you've seen that 
the reason you've got to have contractors is because the budget can only accommodate um, that shape of, of uh, payments on, it, on its balance sheets. Suddenly it makes a lot more sense as to why things are having to work the way they are. And it can be really helpful if you are right and the thing you're proposing is the correct one to explain it to someone else better. If you understand, if you, you're not in their shoes, but you've walked alongside them. Uh, it's extremely rewarding being a manager. You are paid for literally being a reasonable human and helping people. Um, someone in need, if you have a report who suddenly has like a distressing thing or a moment in their life, you can stop work adding to that. That's better than the most horrible little bug fix. Like the most extremely complicated technical thing that it pales in comparison to actually helping a human, I've found. Um, Obviously, you increase and broaden your, your impact, which, yeah, we'll get on to why that's handy. And then, of course, the last point, I don't think anybody goes to work every day just for the love of it. Generally, the fact you're being paid is the reason you do your job. Um, and I've seen management roles seem to have a higher pay grade. It's probably a talk in itself why that is, so I'll skip on. It is also maybe more transferable because more places need management or Perhaps more companies think they need a manager-shaped role than an IC role. Don't agree, but that's how it is. So the move you might make in the other direction, which I did, putting down line management. I missed the code. I missed it really so much. I wanted to get my hands. I wanted to be down in the weeds sometimes. I wanted to understand these things I was talking about properly, and I didn't. And I was getting embarrassed about that, and it was becoming more and more awkward that I wasn't sure I could even do a bug fix. And I had the word principal engineer in my title and I couldn't fix a bug. And it was getting a bit awkward in my head. Um, yeah, I was, the only thing I was probably improving was my management skills, but more slowly. I, you know, I'd lost the fire for either. And I think it's worth calling out the idea of being an accidental manager here, because this is perhaps what happens to a number of people. I've seen it happen elsewhere. So it's worth thinking about if the path you're following was accidental or if you chose it, and if it's the right one for you at the moment. Uh, was your management part, part side of your role, you needed it for promotion? It's not really necessarily a promotion. I think it's a different track and a very valid one, but I think the hierarchy of manage, managerial being seen as higher than I see, I think this is incorrect, but it is what it is. Um, was there a structural change at your company that just needed someone to do these management tasks and you stepped in? Companies grow and change. The pandemic, which is everyone's favorite thing. The pandemic meant a lot of people needed more help. Did you help them and you never really stepped back from it? Was there a sudden structural change? Were there redundancies and things? Did someone need to do this work and you started doing it? Were you just trying to help people? <laughs> you were saying you'd like to be a people pleaser. And helping people immediately pleases people and is what a company often needs. I think I neglected what I needed from the role for too long. So given there's two paths, make a choice and do it well. If you're going down the management path, do it well. It's really valuable. If you're being an IC, pick up those tech skills and improve them. The person who chases two rabbits catches none. Pick a rabbit, chase it, catch it, give the rabbit a nice stroke, Great, you caught your rabbit. <laughs> Too far, I know. <laughs> um, and uh, so if you're going to management, let go of the code, admit it. You're gonna have to put it down mostly. If you're being an IC, hand your reports or your teams to someone else to own and to look after. Being on one of these tracks has huge benefits for the other. In fact, in, in my opinion, you probably can't be really good at one without having done some of the other. Um, there's a very good article I came across whilst researching for this talk by Charity Majors um, called The Engineer Manager Pendulum, where she discusses the idea that you swing back and forth between these roles to be best at them. Um, and I think that's, I wish I'd seen that sooner. There we are. It's, oh yeah, and it's not a once in a career change. You don't just switch over to management and stop. You can go back again. So uh, you can change whilst not changing too much. If you really love the company you're at, do it stealthily. Just put things down, 
don't actually do this because you'll just look like you're being crap at your job. Maybe you have no choice, but ideally do this openly. Talk to your manager. I want to do more of this and less of that. And here's why this is useful for you. Um, in, um, maybe pick up a new role at the same company. So make that change cleaner, that break cleaner. But um, review it at a predetermined time because old habits die hard. And if you were good at your old job, a lot of people wish you were still doing it. Bigger change, move company as well. Your role isn't what it says on the tin. You want this role, but the company isn't doing it right. Change company, try it somewhere else. Or what I did, new role, new company, do the lot. It is the hardest, it is the most time consuming. It is the biggest risk, the biggest jump, and also the biggest possible result. So I did this and I looked at the right shape company. Um, it was the healthiest move for me because I've been at the FT for so long that I think it benefited everybody. Um, was the cult, did the culture, the culture at Google aligned with me there, the diversity is important. The work-life balance is important. Um, the product like Google makes a lot of things, but it does things at scale. And I find that interesting. Like if you're doing something that affects like billions of people, then, you know, it's important by, by default. Uh, and the size of company is quite important. A small company might be very exciting. You can have huge change, like you have such autonomy and such effect, but it's less stable. And, and I've got a lot of commitments outside work. I need to be able for a company to be able to cope if I had to step away for some reason for a while. So I needed the stability of a larger company that others might be frustrated by the pace of change being slower. And I picked a company that could support my change. Um, changing track takes time. I had to like reskill. I had to spin up to speed. I was never going to hit the ground running. And they were expecting that and it was fine because they were big enough to absorb that. Let talent teams do, do work for you. The really good, really good recruiters or whatever the title is will invest in you because like it might not be now, it might be in a few years, but they will invest in you, especially at a staff level. We're all so valuable, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> they will take the time if they're good. It's their job. And if they're good, they'll do it well. So I didn't know that I'd get this job. I didn't actually think I'd get this job, but all the way through the process, it was still gonna be valuable to me, whatever the outcome. I was practicing my coding and loving it. I was forced to review my career, cause you know, on the ninth, you've got this interview. Well, I better have something to say so I don't look a complete idiot about what I've done so far. Uh, obviously you practice your interview. And I saw inside another company, which I like doing, what are they doing better than us? What could we do better? What do we do better than them? It turns out. And very important. How was I going to get feedback at each stage? Cause I saw that as like my payment for the time I was putting in without feedback. I was never going to improve. So if I didn't get that role, how was I going to get the next role instead? Um, I thought about the timelines. I wanted a career break. Could they offer that? Could they wait for my notice period? Plus that, um, as I said, I had a lot of support throughout from the talent team at each stage. Here's your feedback. Here's how we're going to do it. And it's worth considering for the company you're looking into, what are the outcomes that could be? You didn't get this job, but this job's the same, just in a different team. You're a shoe in for that. No, you don't have to go through the process again. Or, oh no, you screwed up one tiny bit. You got to wait 12 months. It might change your whole approach to how you do the interview for that particular company. Uh, as mentioned, the spicy interview process, the coding interviews, I loved preparing for. There's a load of books and websites I've linked in my notes to them. If you're missing the code, this is that side project you never got round to. Cause again, it's a side project with a deadline and you don't want to look like an idiot. <laughs> so you kind of find the way to make the time to do the practice. Um, system design, I wish I'd done sooner. Again, without a deadline, I'd never practiced it. This gave me a deadline and lots of practice. At a staff level, I think system design is a brilliantly important thing and I wish I picked it up sooner. All of this stuff exercises your technical brain and that's what I wanted. So I was enjoying the process and it was going to be useful. And feedback, it's so important. Make sure you're getting it. 
So my journey, it said I see on the tin, I'd stagnated. It said I was a principal engineer, I was an engineering manager. It was what was needed most at the time for the people around me, and I'd, never, I'd not pushed back against that at all. It also suited me very well. And I learned an absolute shed load. However, I'd lost any of my technical confidence. I didn't think I could code. I, was, I felt like an absolute fraud sometimes, because could I actually do this thing? That, no, I couldn't, or could, I, hadn't I hadn't checked it, and you're only as good as your last test, right? Um, so I didn't review that I was doing the role I wanted to. I didn't talk to my line manager, and I should have. I got very lucky and had this really good technical acquisition person who broke down the task and ignored my, my lost confidence and made me realize I could go through this process and pop out the other side with success. Um, how did I find the change? Thoroughly enjoyed the interview process. And that's really promising. You're probably making the right switch if you're enjoying the preparation for the interview. Um, the change is almost like a culture shock, going back to being an IC. And I, I love that. I love the fact that I'm diving back into things. I'm, I've remembered more than I realized I knew. Um, technical things only change so much. I've always, I've recognized that the more I've gone on, that all the fancy buzzwords and all the other things, but the really, the really important stuff kind of doesn't change underneath it. And the management side that I'd done was super useful immediately to the new role. So um, how do I like my new role? I, I love it. I'm back to not wanting to shut the computer at the end of the day, to having to sort of drag myself away from some of the work. Uh, I have terrible imposter syndrome, which I hope at some point will begin to subside, but <laughs> hasn't really yet. Um, and I still have the opportunity to coach and mentor, which is very important to me. Uh, and that makes the role all the more rewarding. In the future, I'm not going to leave this to chance. I can fully believe I'll go back to a management track, but not for a good while, because I'm really excited to be back on the IC track. So the management and the IC track are two separate roles, in my opinion, and you, can you should oscillate between them and become good at one thing at a time. You should review what your role actually is and see if that's what you want it to be. And if it is now, think about the future and what step you might make next and how you'll line yourself up to be ready for that. And when changing, make sure you make the whole process valuable regardless of the outcome. That's me. Thank you very much for listening.